What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to briefly talk about when you should use generators in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about generators in Python today. And this video is going to mainly focus on the application and the use cases of generators, when to use them and why to use them, not so much on what they are and how they work. I already have videos about this on my channel as well. You can watch those if you want to. I am going to give you a very brief introduction and summary of what generators are in this video, but I'm going to mainly focus on the application fields. So let us get started by just explaining very briefly what they are. Let's go to the coding directory here, main.py. And a generator is basically a function that generates values. So I can define a function, my generator, and this function then generates values by using the yield keyword. So I can either do it manually like this, yield 10, and then maybe I can do yield 20, 30, 40, 50. And this is then my generator function and I can define it. I can say gen is equal to my generator. And then this generator function produces values. How does it do that? I can say next, I can call next on the generator and it's going to give me the next value of that generator. So if I run this, you can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, because these are the values yielded by the generator. If I try it again, we're going to get uh, we're going to get this stop iteration error because we don't have any more values. And I can also iterate over generators. I'm giving you a very fast introduction now. If you want a more detailed explanation, watch my other videos. But I can say for value in generator print value. This is also possible. Then it has the same behavior. But the interesting thing about this is this is not a collection. This is not a list where all the values are present already. This is a function that generates values and it can do that either with individual yield statements or it can also do it uh, like this for I in range 100 yield I. This is also possible. So that's basically it. This is my introduction now into generators for this video. The question is now, why do we need that? When should we actually use generators? Why should we actually use generators? And I have prepared a couple of examples here, uh, which I've called memory full, memory gen, Fibonacci full and binary search tree. And they're going to explain basically use cases for using generators. Now, one major reason to use generators is memory efficiency or limited resources, not having enough space, not having enough memory, which can be because you're working on a device that has very small amounts of memory, or you're just working with massive files. Maybe you have like a huge file, you have files that are way too large to load them into RAM, maybe you can load them on the disk, maybe it has like 100 gigabytes of data. So you can store it on your disk, but you cannot load it into RAM at once. And generators basically allow you to go step by step through the lines, for example, through pixels, whatever, uh, step by step through portions, through chunks of the data, rather than uh, processing everything at once. So to show you that I have here a memory full py script. And what this script does is it opens up a file that I downloaded words.txt. This is just a long file. I think we can take a look at it here. LL. If we look at the words file, you can see here it has four, what is this Four uh, megabytes of data, not too large, but imagine this to be a large file. And what we can do now is we can either load the whole file into memory and then process it. In this case, uh, we just load it, we read the lines, and that's it. We can either do that, or we can do it with a generator that goes line by line. So what we have here is a setup where we have a memory usage function, this just checks how much memory we're using, how much memory this process is using. Um, and then it loads all the lines and it terminates the script and just gives us how much memory was used in this process. I have the same script here for a generator or by using a generator. And this function here now opens the file and yields the individual lines, it doesn't store them in a list, it just yields them. And what we do then is we iterate over them. And we don't do anything with them, we don't print them or anything but we process them in the same way we iterate over them. But we don't store them in a collection, we don't store them all at once. 
So this is a very simple example, but if I run these two files now, if I run memory full dot py, you can see that this uses 32 megabytes of RAM. And if I run memory gen, it uses 0 0.12 megabytes of RAM. So way less because we don't have to store the full thing in the RAM. So you can think about this, maybe let's go with my paint here. I don't have my drawing tablet here right now, but I can use my mouse maybe. Imagine you have like a huge file that you want to process. What a list does or what loading all of the file does is it stores all of this file into RAM and then it processes this file. What you do with a generator is you take a portion of that file into RAM, you process it and then you say, give me the next one. And then you take that into RAM. So you need very little RAM to process it like that. You don't have all of the data in your memory at the same time. So that is one major reason to use, uh, to, to use generators. And also this lazy evaluation, this I only get the value when I need it, saves processing time, uh, CPU cycles and memory. Another reason to do that is to represent or to another reason to use generators is to represent infinite sequences. And for this, I have the Fibonacci sequence here because the Fibonacci sequence doesn't really have a limit. So I have here a Fibonacci list. I can say I want to have a Fibonacci list up until a certain point uh, with a function so I can generate the list and return it. But actually, the Fibonacci sequence doesn't have an end. It's the rule of taking the last two numbers and adding them together to produce the next number. This is an infinite sequence. Now you cannot have an infinite sequence as a function, but you can have it as a generator because you can always get the next value by applying the rule. And again, here we have um, the same idea. We take into account time and memory usage. If I run this here, Python three Fibonacci full, you're going to see, hopefully this is not too much. Maybe I used a number that's too large. So let's actually reduce this to, to this. And now you can see that the Fibonacci generation uh, with the list took 0 0.28 seconds and 446 megabytes of RAM. The generator version took 0 0.1 seconds and 0 0.12 megabytes of RAM because everything is evaluated in a lazy way. Everything is loaded on demand. And also this is not limited in any way. I can always get the next, 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 next number um, easily by just calling next or by just iterating further. Now, another use case of uh, generators is for certain data structures. And the file that I have here, this binary search tree, is actually the same implementation here from, um, from the video. So this is from my data structures tutorial series in Python. This is the exact same implementation. And if you have a data structure that you're implementing and you want to implement this iter dunder method where you iterate over it. So if you want to be able to do some, something like uh, creating a binary search tree and then saying for element in BST. If you want to be able to do that with your own custom data structure, you need to be able to implement this uh, iteration dunder. And this is, of course, possible with the yield in this case with the yield from because I have these other uh, private methods here that are yielding the individual key value pairs here. But for some data structures, you're going to need generators as well. So I would say that these are the main reasons. Another reason could be in general working with stream data, working with remote data, getting things on demand, getting things step by step. But the main reason to use generators other than if it's needed in a data structure or if you need it to represent a, uh, an infinite sequence, the main reason to use generators is the efficiency when it comes to your resources. Less CPU cycles, less RAM needed. Everything is just more efficient and doesn't have to be loaded all at once. Now, you should not always use generators, of course, because sometimes you want to have all the values stored and you want to access them quickly by using an index. But if you're going to process them step by step anyways, you can also use a generator. So that's the main reason to do that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.